Hi there! You've probably heard on the news that Uber had more than $1 billion in net losses in the third quarter of 2019. The second quarter was even worse for the company. There was a $5 billion loss and a record low revenue growth. To make things even worse, Uber was banned from operating in London, its biggest market in Europe. But after a slight decline, the firm's shares increased in value again, and investors are bullish about the company's prospects for next year. Now, you might be wondering how this is possible. What makes a company that is losing money still be seen as a good investment choice? It seems that managers and investors are not just paying attention to recent outcomes. Instead, they are looking towards something more important, the company's future. You may ask yourself, how does one do that? How to manage the present and the future at the same time, using BSC and other known financial criteria analysis? Stay tuned for this discussion with us. Generally, companies with large market cap that are losing money today are being punished by the market. But Uber has a very different story to tell. It entered a new industry and is working towards future goals, setting out a solid foundation for long-term margins. I agree that when it comes to traditional companies, let's say Walmart, they might seem more attractive if they're better than expected results in net profit, revenue and return on investment, invested capital. But traditional valuation metrics may not be applicable in all cases. The public market landscape has been through many changes and now investors favor risk takers and cash burners. There is no doubt that financial KPIs are crucial to answer the question, are we financially healthy from our shareholders' perspectives? But in the digital world, companies cannot rely only on analyzing a company's assets and liabilities. Doctors Robert Kaplan and Dave Norton offered us an interesting and useful management framework, the Balanced Scorecard, also known as BSC. As the name speaks for itself, it helps balance out financial measures with non-financial ones, such as customer performance, internal processes, and a growth and learning perspective. Let's go through each one of them now. First, the customer perspective focuses on the satisfaction of our clients, trying to answer the following question, how do our clients see us? This aspect can include specific measures that track competitive and strategic efforts in both customer and market segments. This information is collected to gauge customer satisfaction with the quality, price and availability of products and services. Talking now about the internal process part, it shows how well the business is running and answers the following question. What is our company good at? This perspective can also analyze any possible gaps, delays, bottlenecks, shortages or waste. And finally, the growth and learn perspectives. They look at people, their skills, their training and future opportunities. All those perspectives are aligned to companies' general strategic objectives. To get everyone on board in implementing the strategy, companies must share their long-term vision with all employees. Each of the framework's components should be communicated to every business unit within the company. This way, BSC fosters a shared understanding of an organization's vision of the future by aligning the day-to-day -day working process. What makes BSC so efficient and attractive for companies? Well, BSC promotes a more comprehensive approach that leads to long-term growth opportunities, whereas relying only on financial measures will boost business in the short term. Let's see how it works in Pratt's now. Take a look at Uber, the world's biggest ride-hailing business. The company was once seen as the most feared startup and went public in 2019 with a massive IPO. Today, however, Uber is far from making money. It pays no dividend, it suffered a $5 billion net loss in the second quarter of 2019 and has a huge long-term debt. Still, some investors are not being scared away. 
They believe Uber shares are worth buying for a simple reason. The company's success story goes beyond traditional financial KPIs requirements and expectations of business performance. From its very conception, Uber took a strong position regarding its seamless customer experience. The firm's KPIs include a great number of measures, client satisfaction, uh, cancellation rates, fair reviews per trip, total one-star and five-star ratings, revenue and profitability from different customer tiers such as UberX, UberConf, VIP, Uber Black, Uber Pool users, just to name a few. A customer-centric model simply makes clients fall in love with the company from the very first ride. Uber also tends to improve internal processes considering innovation and diversification as critical components. It branded out its services to food delivery, introduced electric bikes, and is currently developing self-driving cars. Now, talking about its staff, Uber managed to elaborate a set of measures in order to track driver's service excellence. For example, a driver gets deactivated if his or her performance is poor based on overall customer's evaluation. What is also important is that Uber introduced the VIP status that drivers receive when they maintain a high rating over a certain period of time. All these measures applied by Uber are linked to the company's general strategic objective, being the number one in the industry and making transportation fast, reliable and affordable for everyone. In fact, the company is already estimated to have 100 million users worldwide, with a 69% market share in the US for ride sharing and a 25% market share for food delivery. Implementing these BSC measures help the firm define and refine vision, strategy and objectives. But when it comes down to a line of strategic objectives from top to bottom, it's not easy for some companies to ensure that all workers contribute and believe in the established goals and values. Uber, for example, has a sordid history about sexual harassment with both corporate employees and drivers. While it somehow resolved the problem with the office staff, the company could do little about its drivers who are not employees and are classified as independent workers. Uber's rise to number one has been riddled with controversy. It's criticized worldwide for undermining working conditions, clogging up city streets, breaking the traditional tax industry, minimizing taxes it pays, sidestepping national regulations, and fostering a culture of toxic masculinity. As you know, when a company is not able to deal with society's expectation, when a company breaks the law or acts in accordance with ethical standards, it comes with a toll. As a result, Uber has been banned from some cities including London, Frankfurt, Barcelona, Budapest. After losing its London operating license, Uber's stock tanked 6%. As a possible solution, Uber might try to tighten up its driver registration procedures and track them more closely. Ride sharing and the online food delivery industry have robust growth opportunities. With its low revenue growth, safety issues and bold initiatives, Uber has a distinct profile of a company suitable for risk-seeking investors. For those who are dissatisfied with the amount of money Uber is losing, there are other stocks to consider, such as Home Depot, Colgate, Costco, Best Buy or Walmart, all with historical growth stability and increasing sales. But keep in mind that financial measures tell only the story of the past. It's a story for industrial age companies with long-term capabilities and customer relationships were not critical for success. These financial measures are not enough in the modern world, where employees, processes, technology and innovation do matter. And what about you? Do you think that it's still worth investing in Uber shares? Join the conversation in the comment section and tell us your opinion. If you want to know more, click in the link below to access the full article I've prepared about it. See you next week here at the Americas Business Channel with another business case and great managerial ideas for you to boost your career and successfully grow your company.